Here's a question. Should you invest in this company? What about its competitor? Maybe that's a better investment. Or maybe go the index route and find the best ETF that tracks the S&P 500. We're going to look at all three options, and by the end of this analysis video, you'll know where you should put your money. When it comes to a growing company, we want to know which stock has the highest projected earnings growth for the next five years. We like growth. Why would you invest in a stock that doesn't grow? For the S&P 500, this growth is the average projected earnings growth of the index's 10 largest components. If the company can't grow at a higher rate than the index, maybe look somewhere else. But that's just growth. There's still seven more metrics to look at. For growth, the higher the rate, the better. And at the bottom right of the screen, you'll see where these three options rank in terms of growth with a point system. Same for all the metrics in this analysis. Speculation is a major part of any investment. We want to know which stock has the least amount of speculation via a lower P.E. ratio. The reason why I count the P.E. as a measure of speculation is that a P.E. ratio that's too high means investors are banking on potential. And that may be great gambling advice, but if you have a long-term horizon, you want something lower. Out of these three investment choices, which stock is trading lower than its 200-day moving average the most? Most people who track this metric want a positive number, but we're looking for hammered down stocks. That makes them cheaper. So I reverse that and I want a stock that's trading lower than its 200 day. This means the stock is cheaper than the average of what it's been for a while. Next up is figuring out which stock is using its assets, cash, and investment dollars most efficiently to run its day-to-day -day business operations. This combination of return on assets, equity, and investments will tell us what we're looking at in a company that can generate a lot of cash with a minimum amount of waste. We want a high combination of all three. That's the more efficient stock. There's only two ways to make money owning a stock. One, selling for a profit, and two, getting paid a dividend while holding. And if you're someone who thinks long term, you shouldn't be so willing to sell anytime soon. That's where dividends come in. Which stock pays you the most to hold their shares? That's what we're figuring out. The higher the yield, the more you get paid relative to how much you bought the stock at. Simple. Every stock has its negativity. That's what the short float tells us. Which stock are investors and traders most bearish in? What percentage of these shares are being shorted? This is an easy way to determine negative sentiments. For the S&P 500, the short float is the average of its 10 largest components. Ideally, we want a low percentage. We don't want any unnecessary downward pressure. Everybody loves money and everybody loves profits. So which stock generates the most profits from its business? This is translated into the higher profit margin expressed as a percentage. This metric often highlights businesses that have taken advantage of economies of scale, usually reserved for tech companies. And lastly, for the business, which stock do analysts favor the most, with one being a strong buy to five being a strong sell. So the lower the number, the better. This simple number comes from the average analyst grade given to each respective stock. Investing isn't done in a vacuum, and a lot of what other people say has a big effect on the stock's short and long-term performance. For the S&P 500, we again get the average analyst score of its 10 largest components. So do you remember all those points at the bottom right of the screen for each metric? That's how I grade each of our three stocks. What you see here is the total score, and that translates to ranking the best business and the worst business. So if the company has the highest score against its competitor and the S&P 500, we can say it has the best business behind its stock. That means it's a market beat since it has a better business than the average combined businesses of the S&P 500. Of course, if it has a lower score, it's a market lag. And if it has the same score, it's at market average, so take your pick because from a business point of view, it doesn't matter if the scores are equal. 
Before we get to the company's fair price, join my Patreon. As a member, you'll get access to every company I've analyzed so you can compare between different stocks from various industries. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash growth shares or click on the link in the description below. Taking the eight business metrics, its current price, and a conservative projection, here's my fair price for the company. The big percentage number you see on the screen is a quick way to determine if the stock is undervalued or overvalued. A positive number means the stock right now is undervalued and a negative number indicates an overvalued stock. You want the company's current price below its fair price. So lastly, I want to look at the company's performance over 1, 3, 5, and 10 years compared to its industry and the S&P 500. This isn't part of the analysis, but I wanted to include this at the end because at the end of the day, you want a good return on your investments. So even though we might have a good or bad business, does the stock reflect that in the near term and even the long term? Sometimes, all you want to know is if the stock will go up over time. So are you interested in the companies or the two other alternatives? Remember to join my Patreon, invest wisely, and as always, take care of your money.